Hi, Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Here to paint a picture of how true love really acts in the face of all of this chaos and in the face of all of this strife and craziness that's going on. Some of you that are getting caught up in the drama are born again Christians. So let me remind you of what God's love looks like. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Followed by Pat's two cents. Verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, which is love, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. You ever hear the, the Pat's two cents? You ever hear the expression empty cans make a lot of noise? If you are empty of love, you're clamorous. Okay, verse 2. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not love, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It's not puffed up. For example, Pat's two cents. I was at church one day, and I heard a man. He was a guest speaker. He literally said this. It broke my heart. The scowl that came over his face, the look of hatred, it, it was blowing me away that no, I looked at everyone else's faces and no one else seemed to notice what was happening right before our very eyes. And this man started talking about a reverend who was invited to preach at a convention for their denomination. And they were not of the same denomination. Actually, this man was of a seven-day Adventist denomination, and the man was not. He was a Sunday worshiper. And the man was so offended. He said so many people just said, no, we don't want him. What can he tell us, the likes of him? I mean, you should have seen his face. What can the likes of him tell us? What, what can he tell us? about this, that, or the other. How could he tell us anything? Come on! Number one, he was operating out of the flesh. That was a perfect example of partiality and a perfect example of being puffed up. <laughs> Intolerance. Now, what we were pointing out, I mean, we were talking and he opened up the form. And the point I made was, number one, love is the foundation of everything. Number two, if he is called by God, he's a minister, you either are looking to him to fail or you're looking to God. Where is your faith? So what I ask you when you go through changes like that, you have disagreements on whatever. If God can talk through a donkey, don't you think he has the power to talk to someone who just happens not to be of your denominational dogma? Or do you not really believe in God's abilities? Challenging question. But sit that in the corner. And think about it for a minute. Okay. Wow. Verse 4. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. Is not puffed up. Now you see the comparison? 5. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. Is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Well, my question to you is, what if that was a divine appointment? 
where God sent that man into your group to open blind eyes about something that's been bothering the heart of God. You just canceled out any chance of hearing what God may have had to have said through that man based on your religious bigotry. Verse 6, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in Part. So when you think, oh, Pat's two cents, okay, out of the word, back to Pat. When you think you know it all, watch yourself. There's a scripture that says, he that think he standeth, okay? It, it, I'm putting it in everyday terms. Watch yourself, lest ye fall. Be careful about thinking you're standing, thinking you got it all together that you got a corner on the word yeah be careful about that because but the bible says for we know in part and we prophesy in part everything we do is in part but when that which is perfect is come then that which is in part shall be done away when perfection comes baby there won't be any more part of anything. But right now, whatever you do, whatever I do, whatever they do, whoever they are, is always going to be in part. And I know I constantly wear this term out. Nobody has the last word on the word. Nobody has a corner on that market but God. So get off your high horses, quit pointing the finger, <laughs> quit being judgmental, intolerant, and quit being so doggone prejudiced. Because trust me, baby, your little denomination does not have all the answers as much as you'd like to think it does. If God walked into your church right now, a lot of you wouldn't want him coming in because he would break all your traditions. <laughs>